Hello fellow nerds, this is John and I am a nerd that knits. And I have ADHD. I didn't know I had ADHD. It's just kind of something that I've realized over the years. So I'm going to break down how to learn how to knit when you have ADHD and just some tips and tricks I learned along the way. So please bear with me as we talk about knitting and ADHD. ADHD and knitting are like the perfect combination together. For me, I really feel that all the pitfalls of ADHD are really helped with learning how to knit. And knitting just calms your brain. It just gives something for your hands to do. It's perfect while watching TV. It's just the perfect fidget spinner. It really does kind of help you like go to a Zen place. When I found out I had ADHD, I was like, oh, this tracks. Oh, this makes sense. Oh, that's why knitting has really calmed me down and has really helped me out over the years. Here's some tips and tricks I've learned over the years. When you're learning anything with ADHD, it's best if you have high motivation. And this really helped me. My high motivation was I really wanted to learn how to knit socks. So obviously there's a big jump from just starting how to knit to knitting socks but you'd be surprised how fast you can go from A to Z when you have high motivation. And that is really paramount when it comes to learning a new skill, especially for knitting. Other things help in high motivation. So if you are someone that learns visually or you kind of get inspired visually, Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, following knitters on multiple platforms really helps you kind of hone in on, oh, they use that yarn, or oh, that's an interesting design, or oh, I wanna get there, or ooh, I need to put that on my wish list. So all of these visual mediums really do help you, inspire you to, to get where you need to go. Sometimes that can backfire and it might be too much stimulus, but we're, we're looking for pie in the sky dreams and you can totally do that. I picked sock knitting. I wanted to learn how to knit socks and I got there pretty quickly. If you wanna focus on one thing, focus on, I mean, even if you wanna make a sweater, that's fine. But try to be a little realistic with your goals. I obviously was like, nope, doing socks. And that's fine if you go, nope, doing socks, because you still learn a lot of the skills that you will need to use anyways. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, my first sock was atrocious and that's fine because I wasn't going for perfect. I was going for making a sock, which leads me to the next point I wanna make. There's no such thing as perfection. The, the limit does not exist. And I love that about knitting is there are some people that really aim for perfection and it's just not gonna happen. For people with ADHD, we feel that we're not perfect enough or we try to mask to make ourselves perfect. And there's just, it, it, why? Why? I mean, I know we do it to fit into some kind of social narrative, but knitting just gives you that freedom to go, it's not perfect and I'm okay with that. So for those that are not particularly good at organization, myself included, I became a amazing note taker. This is just kind of an example of my journals. This is an older journal. And basically you just, I wrote down like the title of what I was making and sometimes I'll use the needle size. And then this is all the row counts. It's, it's not pretty. This is a tool. So here's my current one. Once again, it's not pretty. Just write everything in your notes, especially if you're creating a, a pattern or you're changing a pattern or you have to make two of something, you know, and you start to try to change it up. Sometimes it's just easier to write it in a notes where all those pattern notes 
and your notes are not conflicting. While I'm talking about tools, let's talk about some amazing things that knitters do that is just a part of our, our technical repertoire. Putting in lifelines, post-it notes, writing on patterns, email the designers if we have questions, and massive amounts of stitch markers. Personally, for me, when it comes to lace or just a lot of patterns that have repeats, I always put a stitch marker here and a stitch marker here between the repeat. Even if the sweater has like multiple repeats, I'm gonna have a gazillion stitch markers just because that's what helps my brain go, okay, this is where that pattern starts. This is where that pattern stops. Okay, next marker. It's all about breaking down little bits of information that are bite-sized. And when you have ADHD, those little markers really help the brain go, okay, next. And if you don't know what a lifeline is, it's basically when you put in like some string or some floss through the stitches and basically it kind of holds your place. So let's say you got part of a pattern done that was really, really hard and you're like, yes, I did it. It's beautiful. It's perfect. If I mess this up, like I have to go all the way back to the beginning, correct? So I put a lifeline after this part that's beautiful I don't want to mess it up if you mess something up in the future you can always go back to that point so it really really does help you without feeling that you've wasted your time and it just makes you go okay I did this much and it's beautiful and it's perfect let's put a pin in it and then keep on going and if everything is beautiful up to that point cool you can take your lifeline out lifelines are always there to help you to save your butt and there's nothing wrong with that post-it notes are beautiful i put them everywhere i when i'm doing uh, graphs i'll put post-it notes above and below the line so my brain doesn't confuse what my mind i'm on because that happens so post-it notes really help you keep your place when you're doing knitting graphs doing color work if you're doing this or that This is something that I recently started doing as an ADH knitter that has really helped me become more mindful of projects. And that is not putting projects in a project bag. Over the years, if you want to ignore something, for me, if you just put it in a bag and store it at the back of the closet, I will not touch it nor see it for years. That's just how I work goes with knitting projects and that's a problem especially when I need to get them done. So what has been my new thing that I do to get my projects done? And I know it sounds kind of funny but it's a basket. A basket that you can see through. So this is perfect for me just because I'm a visual person and I can see the yarn and I can see the project and I can go oh I need to work on that. Now there are obviously some downsides to this. You can put multiple projects in it and multiple balls of yarn, and you can also have multiple baskets lying around your house. All of those apply and all of those still apply to me, but at least I can see the project and go, oh yeah, I need to work on that. Because once again, with ADHD years, if it's out of sight, it is out of mind. Plus, 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 plus. So I really hope that these uh, tips and tricks work well for you. Someone that has ADHD or wants to learn how to knit as someone that has ADHD or you just need some extra tips and tricks. Uh, so all the things that apply, I just hope that these worked for you. So if you have any comments or some tricks of your own, please comment, like, and subscribe.